How did it late neighborinos? I'm honestly shocked that it's already the end of January and 2023 is well underway. Thankfully, I found a way to heat my new flat, so I'm no longer having to wear two t-shirts, three jumpers, four hoodies, all while sat in my big jacket anymore. But for a change of pace and for the theme of this video, I'll start off by saying buongiorno all. We're back with another new release in 2023 as Maniskin have released their new album, Rush. Now, before we get going, I'd like to start off the review by saying my apologies for the pronunciation of Maniskin. I've seen a video of them saying that the correct pronunciation is Monoskin, but the Italian way is Maniskin, but undoubtedly my charming northern English accent is most likely butchering how he meant to say the name accurately either way, so I'll be sticking with the Italian pronunciation, I think. Maniskin for the video. And if that makes you want to throw your device out the window in a rage, I completely understand, and I can only say again, I'm sorry. So my apologies, and I appreciate your understanding in advance. Now, going into this album, I'll admit I didn't know too much about Maniskin. I'd heard a fair few of their tunes, all of which sounded pretty decent. They were also the Italian legends that took over Eurovision back in 2021 and conquered it for the win. I was also very aware the lead singer was a man with a gracious head of hair on him, something even I can appreciate. But epic newsflash, he's, uh, he's shaved it all off, yeah. But to be honest, I can't really say that I was a huge fan of Maniskin prior to this album. It's not that I didn't like them or anything, I just hadn't dedicated any time to listening to them, other than what I'd heard or seen by accident or in passing. Like I said though, everything I'd seen or heard was kind of decent, especially Damiano's hair. So when I heard that their album Rush was due out at the start of 2023, I was more than willing to give it a go. So, will Rush convert me to a full-time Maniskin fan? Well, let's get on with it then. Now, first of all, this album is rather long, so I'll try to keep my overview brief but detailed in certain highlights. Now, at a quick glance, the album to me feels very much 2003 emo punk meets the cool slickness of the strokes. Starting off the album, we have Oh My Mind and Blah Blah Blah, with Blah 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 being quite catchy, reminding me of a wet leg song, kind of. Whilst Gasoline reminded me of a new era Fallout Boy song through dramatic sounding large echoes on the main hook of the song. Very groovy. Cool Kids was a great change up from the past three songs, which had all been in pretty much the same style, and I really liked the vocals, which felt a lot like the band formerly known as Slaves, now known as Softplay. Straight after Cool Kids, there was a much needed stylistic change up in the slower and more earnest sentimental song, If Not For You. The break was pretty welcome in my opinion, as all these songs are quite in your face the entire time. And to me, If Not For You was a pretty decent song, to be fair. The instrumental of the song felt very Aerosmithy to me, without sounding like an ill-attempted copy of an Aerosmith song, which I could only congratulate Maniskin on achieving. The tempo is then instantly picked up again with a rumbling drum beat on Read Your Diary and then some fast paced screechy guitar tones on the next three songs, all sang rather lovely in what I'm assuming is Italian. Something which felt very nice and fitting on the album to me and something I'm glad they included. As since their rise to the limelight, they could have easily just sang all their songs in English to ensure they got maximum exposure. So the song sang in Italian felt like a nice little nod towards their roots, but who knows, maybe this meant to be put on the album as a bit of a novelty and it's clearly sucking me in. The last three songs are a pretty decent end to the album and I'd definitely heard Supermodel before, most notably due to the controversial guitar riff on it. I mean, the guitar riff has clearly been plucked from Smells Like Teen Spirit, but for me, I feel like there's enough of a development on the riff and it's not just blatant plagiarism, so it's used pretty well throughout the song and it helps that the actual song itself doesn't sound like Smells Like Teen Spirit. I think when the majority of pop music uses sampling of old songs to develop into a new song, I don't particularly have an issue with guitar riffs being used as long as it's clearly a creative development and transformation of the original work. And it's not just clearly a cover of a song that's attempting to be passed off as a new song. Outside of that, I think the song Supermodel is pretty good, I'd say, and it carries itself enough for me to forget the similarities with regards to the guitar riff. Now, The Loneliest was a really interesting way to end the album, and I felt like it was a bit of a come down from the rest of the hyperactive, punchy songs, reflecting maybe the melancholy you feel after a party when you're left all alone. It came as a bit of a surprise to hear at the end of the album, and it was a choice I thought was pretty great. It instantly reframed the way I saw the entire album, twisting my view from an in your face rock album reflecting the high life it's making it seem as if the whole lifestyle they project throughout their prior songs is actually just a cover up for their isolated insecurities i'd say it's a pretty great impact for a last song to have and it's why i always find it interesting to focus on how the album starts and how it ends as personally for me that's what always makes the biggest impression and the end of this album certainly made an impression on me overall this feels like a really well produced album and the band themselves sound great on each track and the vocals alongside the short stabbing guitar riffs is 
really what stands out as the identity of the band, where the guitars almost go note for note with the vocal punctuations in terms of how they're playing. For example, Pink Floyd on the wall displays long winding notes overlapping the vocal performance, whereas Man of Skin aim for short punchy notes that go in sync with the vocals and it really works quite well at times. And to me at least, it doesn't come across as tacky, which is the main pitfall of such a style most of the time. Man of Skin weren't really a band I was going out of my way to listen to, as usually the progressions of their songs aren't really to my taste. But to be totally honest, I would rather listen to this album than a lot of other stuff that's out there at the moment. As a result, I came away from this album feeling pretty positive, to be honest. The main things which I'd fall are really down to my own personal tastes and not with the album itself. I feel at times maybe the lyrics are a bit simplistic in their nature, but that's kind of necessary for the style of songs that they're making. But honestly, the main draw towards this album for me is the attitude that it has. It's absolutely full on and in your face and they couldn't give a flying donkeys what you're saying or what you think about their music. It's kind of about saying, here's our tunes, get on with it and enjoy it. Overall, I think I'm feeling about a 6.8 for the album and I'll definitely be tuning in to further releases by Maniskin. I think if you're into pop styled glam rock, then this album must be in the high eights or nines for you. But mainly this album just made me think this band must be absolutely mental to see live. And I mean that in a good way, so I'll be keeping my eyes peeled for any live performances by them. An impressive album that pulled me in despite the song style not usually being to my tastes. Good for you, Maniskin. Top effort. And on that note, I think I'll say ta for now, and I'll see you later.